you Dad, kids, get, please, get settle down. <laughs> Thanks for helping us move in, Trace. Hey, you're welcome. Hey, have you heard? Mom knows somebody who's thinking of getting artificially inseminated. It's me. Yeah, I know. Just mom told me I wasn't allowed to tell you that she told me. I said quiet! Ernie, aren't you going to put those kids to bed? Yes, Shelly. Yes, Shelly. Yes, I am, Shelly. If you kids aren't in bed in five minutes, I'm going to... Oh, I don't know. What should the useless threat be this time? Just relax, Ernie. I'll put him to bed. Trace? Yeah? Is she asleep? For an hour. Wow. You're really good with kids. Do you think you can go home now? <laughs> Shelly and I want to go to bed. Her hair smells so wonderful. Like peppermint. Oh! That's her brother's gum. We've, we've been looking for that all afternoon. <laughs> hey, Ern. What do you think about this artificial insemination thing? Well, I think I don't care how you do it. I'm just very sure that you should have children. So why don't you go on home and get cracking? I will in just a sec. Since I made this decision to become a single mother, I've done a lot of thinking. Now, my generation of women grew up as the media came of age, and they practiced on us. I was told as a child that my goal was to be a mommy. That seemed right. Then, in rapid succession, I was better than men. The same as men, therefore equal. And then equal to them, but different. Interesting that after so many different female role models, my real goal is still to be a mommy. One is one, two is the key. It's so much different than it used to be, oh baby. Just let it go, oh yeah. You're going to open up a can of peas. And life ain't really what it's supposed to be, yeah. But you're the only one who has I wanted so badly to become a mother, but first I had to choose a father. Not easy, and even harder when you're thinking about artificial insemination. To begin with, you have to ask yourself, what qualities am I looking for? Now, are you too hot with that sweater on? I can take the sweater off. Did you have enough to eat? Huh? Do you have to go to the bathroom? What should daddy do? Too attentive. Dad. 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 Not attentive enough. Don't hit daddy. Don't hit daddy. Don't hit daddy. Go hit mommy for a little while. So wrong on so many levels. So why not pick someone you know? Someone you care about. You want me to answer as a friend or an attorney? As a friend. Of course, Tracy. I would love to father your child. Great! But as an attorney, I intend to retain 50% custody over said child. <laughs> what does that mean? That's the law, Tracy. The father has rights. That means that when I decide to take Mariah to Nantucket oh, for the summer... Who's Mariah? You don't know your own daughter's name? Oh, the judge is going to love that. <laughs> You're taking our daughter to Nantucket without me? I'm afraid my wife doesn't really care to have you join us. David, you're not married. Tracy, you're not pregnant. Oh, by the way, Mariah's spending Thanksgiving with us. Fine, I get Christmas. Hanukkah. Hanukkah? I'm raising her as a Jew. David, you're not Jewish. That's beside the point. I have the right. Well, obviously that was a bad idea. I started looking around for other options. That brought me to the sperm bank. And of course, I had to drag along my friend Charlotte. And that's where I think we left off last week. Boy, it's not easy keeping millions of people up to date on your life. <laughs> I don't know how my mom does it. Oh, 
right. We've looked through your questionnaire and done a cross-reference search to find a donor that satisfies your specific preferences regarding ethnic origin, height, bone structure, medical history, hair color, education, hobbies, pets, goals, ambitions, favorite color, and SAT scores. And? Honey, if this guy exists, he ain't donating sperm. <laughs> but we have come up with seven, though not ideal, maybe realistic candidates that match some of your specifications. Excuse me, if we wanted less than ideal men, we could go, gosh, anywhere. <laughs> oh, this is so sweet. Listen to what this guy wrote in his profile. He says, everyone thinks I'm shy but I'm just thoughtful and loving and want to be successful in my marriage. Yeah? Eczema, deviated septum, undescended testicle. We'll be in touch. So what are we thinking now? Uh, I, you know, it's just a little overwhelming, you know? How do you decide something so big? Mom, how did you decide to pick Dad? I didn't really pick him. He was just around, and I was trying to make someone else jealous. <laughs> I guess it didn't work. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, anyway. Sure, you want to find someone who's intelligent and healthy, but what about intangible qualities? You know, it's so hard. How do you figure that out from a questionnaire? You know, qualities like kindness, responsibility, decency. Okay, so what do these racehorses look like? <laughs> There's a privacy issue for the donors, but we do have a scale of attractiveness and rank each donor on his appearance based on a scale from one to ten. Yeah, like in junior high. Well, okay, no, excuse me, but when you say we rank them, you don't mean... The staff. Me, Deborah Sue, Latrice, Gabby. Sometimes Phil is the swing vote. So we're relying on your judgment? That's right. And if I were to ask you, who, in your opinion, would you rank a 10? Well, for starters, my husband. Oh, well, you're a lucky girl. This was taken on a roller coaster. <laughs> okay, look. The simplest way to narrow your choice is for you to bring me a picture of somebody acceptable so that we can match it up to a donor. Why don't we send in a picture of Alec Baldwin? If I send in a picture of Alec Baldwin, they're gonna think I'm Kim Basinger. Sure they will. <laughs> Honey, is there no way you could change your mind so this ends up being an actual human being that fathers my grandchild? Celia, if I may, it's very difficult to make a decision like this, and what she really needs from you now is for you to support her? Yeah. What was wrong with that guy? <laughs> Who's Henry? His father owned those crab houses. God, Mom, he was such a creep. Well, now he's a creep with crab houses, and you're paying for sperm. You tell me. Oh, okay. So, look, she's decided to go with the donor thing, and I think we should really focus on why we're here. Fine. But if you were married to Henry, you wouldn't have to worry about how to pay for this baby. I'm not worried about it. Maybe you should be. <laughs> how stable is that outfit you work for? The fastest growing software company in LA. Yeah, but how long are computers going to be around? Crabs will be around forever. <laughs> this is all my fault, isn't it? Oh, what are you talking about, Mom? Please don't do this now. Honey, look, I just want you to be happy. Mom, just don't start that now. You don't want her to want you to be happy? She's not finished. And I want you to do what feels right for you. And? And not embarrass the entire family. <laughs> yep. Look, Mom, I have thought this through. I, I've thought it through, and I'm sure I'm doing the right thing. So what would happen if I just waited, like, three more years? Oh, God. Trace, I see women in my office all day long who are only three or four years older than you are, who are spending thousands of dollars trying to get pregnant. Well, yeah, and you help them. You have a whole bulletin board out there filled with pictures of their kids. The point is, those are the success stories. And to be perfectly honest, a lot of those twins out there are just double prints from Savon. <laughs> oh, 
God, I'm so confused. It's confusing everybody. This species is finding whole new ways to reproduce. I have a patient who donated an egg to her sister so that she and her husband could have a baby. Turns out that the woman is having an affair with the sister's husband. Then the wife finds out about it. Now there's a custody battle over the egg. And who is the legal guardian of the egg? Yours truly. Wow. Yeah, I know. And I'm the only one who even knows where the egg is. <laughs> yeah, oh, jeez. So anyway, my problem is that You wanna I... know where the egg is? <laughs> no. Why does this feel so weird? Because you're spending thousands of dollars trying to accomplish what women have spent their entire history trying to avoid. Yeah, pregnancy with no father. Yeah. But do your kids miss having a dad? Yes. Not their real dads, but there are dads on TV they wish they had. <laughs> oh, Charlotte, this is serious. I know. Look, all I'm saying is having a man around is no guarantee that your kid's gonna have a father. Right. And there's a lot of women doing this now. You're very cutting edge. Oh, I don't want to be cutting edge. I just want a baby. Not even a cutting edge baby, just a small, quiet one. With nice manners. <laughs> what do I do? Do what I do. You're 95. You're on your deathbed. Picture this. Do you want to be alone? Or do you want a couple of wrinkled 60-year-old kids fighting over what you're going to leave them? I want the wrinkled kids. There you go. Five ninety-two. I've decided on five ninety-two. Great. Great. <laughs> or ten ninety-six. No, no. I mean, you don't change your mind. We love him. We know everything from his medical history to his favorite color. What would you do? Oh, oh, oh yeah, good. Ask her. I'm not allowed to volunteer an opinion. Take five ninety-two. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that? Nothing. I didn't say anything. Take 592. Did you just say, take 592? Yes, yes, I did. Inside information. OK, are you happy now? Yes, I am thrilled. I am thrilled to be purchasing six vials of 592. Why shouldn't I be? He's a, he's a well-educated, healthy, goal-oriented, six-foot, 180-pound, brown hair, hazel-eyed, cleft-chinned Adonis, for God's sakes. I think he just walked in the room. I'm sorry, did you just say, I think he just walked in the room? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> okay, Felicia, thanks. I'll see you next week. Thank you. That was 592, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to volunteer that information. Right. <laughs> Can I do the thing? What thing? The thing, the, the, the part where you whisper, the whispering part. We're not allowed to give out free samples. So there he was, the potential father of my child in the flesh, and he just walked out the door. I didn't know what to do, so I decided to just leave it up to fate. I guess when I think about it now, I followed that guy out of the sperm bank because I was trying to get closer to the man who was about to become the father of my child. I mean, if in fact this was 592, I owned six vials of him. <laughs> okay, I knew more about this guy on paper than anyone I'd ever been involved with. But for some reason, I needed more. I started to think back on past boyfriends and how much information I'd had on them. Do you have any, like, goals or ambitions? <sighs> My parents are putting in a pool this summer. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Do you have any goals or ambitions? I want to be a doctor. 
great. So like I can prescribe drugs for myself. <laughs> so do you have any goals? Anything you'd like to do? Yeah, I've been meaning to tell you. I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> and yet, at some point in my mind, I had put my first name with the last name of every one of those guys. Oh, I guess life is kind of a trade-off, you know? I mean, if you fall in love with someone, they're real. You can touch them. You may not have a donor profile where you know what his SAT scores are or what kind of dental history his uncle had, but you can look into his eyes and know who he is. I guess I was just kind of needing to be able to do that. Wow, they sure take a long time making coffee. And yet I insist on coming back here every day. Yeah, I know. I've seen you here. Who was this? I had just spent over $1,000 on this guy's bodily fluids, and here she was trying to get hers for free. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Some of us like some coffee. Keep line moving. How embarrassing. It was time to go home. What more was I going to find out about this guy in a coffee shop? Six foot two, 180 pounds, brown hair, hazel eyes. What's his name? What's his name? Miss. Are you ready to order? You know, I don't know what happened. I had my wallet here a second ago. A uh, tall latte, please. Um, excuse me? Yeah. This, this is yours. It just... Whew, uh, thanks. Uh, can I buy your coffee? Uh, thanks. What's your name? You want to know my name? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's Tracy. Oh, well, hi, Tracy. I'm Richard, but you can call me... So, you think you bought this guy's sperm, and you just pray to God he's not going to say... Dick. <laughs> there you have it. You know, you, you look familiar to me. I feel like I've seen you around. Just today. I mean, I, I, you know, I just have that kind of a face. <laughs> so are you from this area? Not originally. But I went to UCLA. Right, you majored in history. How do you know that? Because I appear to be psychic. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah, it looks that way. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, what other things can you tell me about myself? Your favorite sport is tennis. <laughs> I'm wearing tennis shorts. <laughs> I don't think you're psychic. <laughs> really? You don't think I'm psychic? No, no, I don't think you're psychic. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Your favorite color is green. Your GPA was 4.0. You're allergic to lobster. Your maternal grandfather had bunions. Oh, and he, he wants you to know he's very proud of you. You are adorable. Would you like to go out sometime? Well, I... Uh, you know, I, it's, uh, it's hard to... Um, I, 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 you know, I, I need to make a, a phone call. I'll keep your coffee warm. He asked me out. Possible 592 is hitting on me. Who is this? <laughs> This is serious, Charlotte. Did you follow him? Yes, I followed him. What are you trying to do? Well, I'm, I'm trying to, to know whether I made the right decision. And how exactly are you going to do that? Well, I... Thanks. Hi again. Hi. Uh, listen, I, I won't be able to take you up on your offer. Oh, that's too bad. Could you do me a favor? Yeah. Would you mind just looking in my eyes for just one second? Okay. 
Bye. Thanks. In advance. There is a point when you realize that the donor of the sperm is not going to be the dad. This vial of liquid is never going to be a father. And every woman who's ever done this has had to reach that day where she just kind of forgets about looking for him. Anyway, it's not fair to him either. I mean, if that was 592, he had done this anonymously. And I had to respect that. I mean, there was a reason for it. If not, Father's Day for these guys, it'd be like a nightmare. <laughs> to sit all day and just be served breakfast in bed over and over and over. <laughs> and it's not like he's going to be getting up in the middle of the night and, you know, taking feedings or changing diapers or teaching our child how to ride a two-wheeler. He's just a man who's donated sperm so that I can have a family. Oh, I see. Just like your father. <laughs> She's probably kidding. <laughs> Good night. You know, I fantasize a lot about what my baby will be like. You know, I mean, maybe it'll have my smile and my stubbornness and my brother's artistic ability and my mother's... Okay, let's come back to that. But really, this baby is half me and half possible 592, which is 246. No, wait. Two and five. <laughs> All right, well, let's just hope possible 592 was good in math.